this tutorial I'm going to go over some of Twixter Pro's advanced tools, specifically the usage of Twixter Pro to separate your footage into multiple layers by supplying mats and the addition of splines to get even better results. You should be familiar with the settings of the regular version of Twixter before watching this tutorial because I won't be covering the basic Twixter concepts here. You can refer to the regular Twixter tutorials for more information on the basics. I will go over an example using a single additional layer in this tutorial, but you may have up to three additional layers over the background with Twixter Pro. I'm using After Effects for this tutorial, but you may also use Fusion. Also note that splines are only available in After Effects and Fusion. I'll start by showing you our footage that we want to retime. As you see, we have a foreground guy and he has a lot of motion blur, but we want to retime this shot and the guy in the foreground will present some issues since he's on a separate plane in addition to all the motion blur. Twixter has no way of knowing internally that he's in the foreground and not part of the same plane. We also have a map for this guy at each frame. I can show you in the regular version of Twixter if we want to retime this footage altogether without using the map. You can see what happens is we get a lot of warping in the Twixtered result. We can use Twixter Pro and just by utilizing a mat that I made, you can use the Roto Brush or just Roto it in AE or another program like Mocha. If you take a look at our mat, you'll see that our mask is completely white with no transparency on the interior. You can, however, have a bit of transparency on the edges as you get from anti-aliasing. This is what you need for the best results. You can see that by viewing FG1 on our display, it shows us the foreground being Twixtered without the background. And if we look at the background Twixtered, you can see that Twixter does the best it can to fill in the missing information. Keep in mind that in the final result, Twixter will be compositing the foreground layer on top of this. We will leave our display on Twixtered output, which will include the individual layer Twixtered settings, foreground 1 Twixtered, foreground 2 Twixtered, etc. But we can see that viewing these individual layers is very useful when you're interactively guiding the motion estimation for a particular layer. The single layer Twixtered settings allows you to see an individual layer retimed without having to wait for all the layers to be calculated and composited. Let's look at the foreground 1 settings. We can see the foreground one inverted mat shrink set to zero. You see that it leaves a bit of a foreground on the background in the Twixtured result. This halo we see is due to the semi-transparent pixels along the edges of our mat from the anti-aliasing as we described earlier. We can change the foreground one inverted mat shrink to one and you can see that the halo of the foreground on the background has not gone away. Sometimes we need to increase that number to a greater number such as 2 or 3 depending on how large of a halo we're trying to remove. That setting basically shrinks the background mat calculated from the foreground mat, so any spillage from the foreground gets removed. You should set the foreground mat channel to whichever channel the information is in. In this case, the mat was stored in the alpha channel, so I could choose alpha. Now we just specify which is the mat for FG1 and I'll choose the a mat. If we do a RAM preview or simply check a few of the frames, we can see that it's better, but I still have some issues. You can see some pulling here near the top of the frame as well. In this case, on frame 29, for instance, we see that the leg looks like it's pulling in both directions because the tracking is a little confused. We can get a better result if I use splines to further assist Twixter and tell Twixter where those legs are going. For After Effects users, we can see that I've already added splines, but I can show you how I did this. First, I want to lock these ground plane splines so I don't have to display them. If I just lock them, they will stay out of my way while I work on the foreground plane splines. I can just toggle the boxes here to lock them and turn off the displays. First, we can go to source mode. We should only animate splines in source mode because the splines show where features match between frames on the original source frames. I just draw the spline with the drawing tools in After Effects. You see we just follow the leg using keyframes and animate the splines. They can just be simple like this. Now if we go back to frame 29 in Twixtered output mode, you can see that it isn't pulling from all directions anymore. 
These splines told Twixter internally where the leg was coming from and where it was going to. This is the benefit of using splines. I don't need splines on all the frames though, so you can see that we can animate them on and off the screen. In addition to that, we need to animate the opacity of the splines to zero for when they're off the screen and back to 100 when they're on the screen. Twixter uses opacity as a control to use the spline or not because After Effects does not let us add our own parameters to the splines. And since we're not using the splines to mask an area, Twixter is free to use the opacity for its own use. Note, the opacity should either be 0 or 100, so make sure to set your keyframes so that there's no in-betweening of the opacity setting. You can refer to the user manual for more information on setting up the keyframes. And also, you may want to turn on step interpolation for those animated values. Let's take a look at this area here between his head and his arm around frame 68, sources frame 16 to 17. If you're ever wondering if you're using the spline or not, there is this little feature that only works in source mode called Draw Geometry. What it does is if you select all, it will select all the splines that it's using at any particular frame. If I just want to see the foreground, I can select FG1. Okay, if you look at all my foreground splines, they're all one after the other in the list here all together. The reason for that is because we will set the first one we're using for foreground one, and then the last one we're using, and then foreground one will use all the masks or splines from the first to the last, as displayed in the order of masks in the timeline. So from lower leg edge to arm edge. If you only need one spline, set the first and last mask to the same spline. Any splines that are not assigned to to one of the foreground or background layers will not be used by Twixter. Output frame 29 by his head didn't track too well, so we could add one more spline there. We can make the spline using the drawing tools in After Effects. We'll call it Head Edge and animate the mask path and the opacity as we saw before. We can just adjust the spline and move forward and animate the spline to match his head. We will animate it on and off where we don't use it. You might ask if we shot a clean plate for this and actually shooting a clean plate in this kind of situation would always be a good thing to do even if you don't end up using it. We want all of these shadows so a single clean plate image may not save time, but in saying that, we could use it for cleanup on this other side if need be. Also, we can make a clean plate out of one of the frames further down here where he flips out of the frame. What we could do with a clean plate is clean in situations like this where we have an edge from the motion blur on around frame 49 may not get a perfect result even in the end, but it will be a lot better than if you don't use these splines. You can see that if I stop the splines here at mid-leg so the face and the arm splines are not being used at the result, it would be much worse without the use of splines. We can put them back on now. We also need to discuss the background because those shadows also get all warped and wobbly when we twixter the shot, so we need to add splines to the background too. We can put the display on background twixtered so everything in the area under the foreground guy needs to stay still. So I just draw a bunch of splines to keep everything in place. These splines don't animate, they just stay in place. If we had a moving plate, we could track the spline along the plate. Also, we almost always use forward mode for warping when using splines. One more little trick that I want to show you. Normally you get a blend between two frames. If we go to frame 15 and look at the pant leg, you can see that it blends in and out and pulls off the edge a bit. If we display foreground one twixtered, you can see through it to see that it's a blend as it morphs between them. If I turn on Smart Blend, which is by going to Warping and selecting Forward, which uses Smart Blend, now you can see that we don't have the transparency because if 
either adjacent frame is part of the new frame, we get 100% opacity instead of just a percentage of each frame. You can also animate the Smart Blend option if you decide that you don't want it on for the whole sequence. So the rule of thumb is if you see popping, you probably want to turn off or animate off Smart Blend. And if you see inappropriate morphing or smearing on the edges, then you probably want to turn on Smart Blend. The last thing that you might want to do is clean up any lingering edges you see with a good old roto from a clean plate that you shot or one from a frame further down when he flips up like this. We can make a garbage mask and reveal the clean plate through or we can just clone from the clean plate for these areas. You can see how much better this is working than that original version with just Twixter and not Twixter Pro with the use of mats and splines.